You know what stinks? Bad note-taking setups. You know what stinks even more? Not knowing how to use Notion. That's why I made the course Mastering Notion. You can get it on Skillshare right now, or you can buy the Supreme Second Brain, where you'll have it looped in to the bundle and any individual template I'll ever make. Now, if you want to build a second brain from scratch, you can watch this series. I'm going to show you how to make a great note-taking setup that'll work in any system. So to get things started, we're essentially going to go to this meeting and notes page. Then we're going to just copy the page real quick, back to the home page, slot in a little mention of an H2 in there just to do our due diligence on the home page. And then we're going to go to the databases page that we created earlier. And this is going to be a good opportunity for everybody to see uh, the sort of way that we're going to set up our, our notes. So I'm just going to copy the link to this view and go to this meeting and notes page. Now, for those of you that aren't aware, I love call out blocks and I'm going to make a slash column two and then do a slash call out for a calendar. Make this little default background, bold this, spell it right, and then put a little calendar icon right here. And the vibe of this setup is it's going to be a calendar and then on the right just like a backlog of all the different notes that you've taken. So let's duplicate this, drag it over here. And something that I like to do with my note systems is add a pin in it. Put a put a pin in it. Pin. So by adding this pinned note section, this can be kind of where you have a lot of the important notes, maybe for meetings that you just had, or maybe for recurring things you need to look back at for a little bit of time, then you can duplicate that, add a little space here, and then change this to groups notes. And this is essentially just gonna be like your backlog of all the notes you ever had. So do a little writing outline. And now we can paste that create linked view. And we're gonna start this layout with a calendar view. So this is just a great way to look at the different notes that you've taken before and kind of look at the different meetings you've had. You obviously have a lot of different views now when it comes to calendars. You can choose for it to be a monthly view or if you go to the three dots here, you can choose to click on this and change it to a weekly view. So it's completely up to your discretion. We're going to start it with a weekly view to get started. Started to get started. Nice English. So I'm going to add a new item here just so we can start tweaking the database properties. So first of all, I'm gonna change this default tag to be a type and then type is gonna be a select property. So let's change this to select and you can put whatever you want here. Uh, I like stand up and then put like a weekly sync and then like an ad hoc meeting. It's just nice to know like what the note is. And then a couple basic ones here. We're gonna change this to a meeting date and then we can do a created time. So this essentially will just have it be like a lot of the different properties we have. So if we then create a formula, if you're familiar with this channel, we do a lot of this where we essentially make date properties that say if empty, so if like the thing you can select, which would be the date property, so meeting date, and then close that, equals true, then pick the created time. But if not, click the meeting date, and then you'd close this off, and then essentially, Anytime you pick it, it will overwrite it. And that just makes it easier on those of us who have recurring meetings or, you know, jot down notes quickly, but don't necessarily want to like put a date property associated to it because this is a meeting and notes database. And then a couple other things here, we're going to obviously make a checkbox property that's going to be for the pinned items. We can do a person property for the participants. Say you're in a notion system with other people could be nice to assign the meetings to those people. And then also, if somebody was the one who started the meeting, you can do a created by property as well. Now, a couple of properties I really do like are URL properties. So if we do like a conference call link and an event link with another URL, if you manage to sync your Notion databases with, with something like Google Calendar, this makes things really convenient. I've done it before. I have a whole video on how to do that with make.com if you want to go check that out. And this entire notes template kind of matches with that system I made in that video. So it's pretty one-to-one -one, and it's how I do it with my own notes. Now I'm just going to hide this journal log here. We're never really going to need to look at it. And I'm going to also put one more relation here to the contacts database. So contacts database, second brain xx and this is going to come in really handy just like we did with the projects database where all the contacts tasks resources are all going to like be inside of that contact so this is sort of like 
a precursor to that. So meetings and notes. And then for all these different relations, we obviously can put the icons. So I'm gonna put silhouette for the contacts, check mark for the tasks, and then a wrench, which is my favorite icon for the projects, and then layers for the areas. Probably a pro at this by this point. So we're gonna show these as minimal just to clean it up a little bit right here. And then we can hide this. And that's pretty much all that you're gonna need from a property standpoint. So in your actual system, you can create a couple different views here and templates that I think really augment your notes, especially in a second brain system. We're gonna make a template that connects to tasks and projects. And we're gonna kind of make a couple different views here that improve the quality of the workspace overall, so don't go anywhere. First of all, I would recommend that you sort by the date here. So that would mean that like we do descending, the most recent things are on top. And then the properties I'm gonna show, eh. I only really like showing, you know, maybe the area, uh, the type, and like who is in it. So you don't need to show a million items here. And for the first one, I'm gonna filter it to uh, actually be me. So that would be for the created by. So if we do contains me, go to the three dots, add advanced filter, and then we can do or participants contains me. I'm actually gonna turn this into a group and do it this way because of I'm gonna copy the view over somewhere else in a bit. It's gonna make it easier on me. And then I'm gonna press save. Now, why do I do that? Oh, now what view do I wanna pick? Like what calendar do I wanna pick? You can pick from any of the different ones that you made. So you can either, you can go to these three dots and select whether you want it to be by, you know, the actual date property, the meeting date, so the manually selected one or the created time. I like doing this one. Uh, I know it's a little weird when like you then click on it, and then you manually select the day, but this is a calendar view that's gonna be able to more accurately represent when you either jotted a note down or when a meeting actually occurred. So that's why I like using this property. You can obviously change that, but uh, for me, I'm gonna rename this to my week and then put a little silhouette here, so just a user, and then you can duplicate this and then put team and then uh, you know, type user, have it pick multiple people and like remove the filter. And then what I would recommend that you do is if you wanna just have the meeting notes, pick the calendar with the meeting notes. Uh, and then if you wanna have a monthly view, you know, change this to team and then put a parentheses and then put month and then change the calendar to show as like monthly. And the same with uh, this, you can be like my month and then change this to show the month view. Totally up to your discretion, like I said, uh, I personally like month views. The, the week view is new to me, but I appreciate it for what it is. Now, when it comes to the pin notes, I'm gonna copy this link and send it over here. And the reason that I had the group is because, first of all, I'm gonna change this to a list view. I'm gonna only show the, the only properties I'm gonna show are actually areas to give context on like what it's for. And then the pinned checkbox. And then I'm gonna filter this to and it's gonna have pinned on it. So that's the only reason that that was there. And then right here, you can just change this to me. So it's like my pin notes. And then if you right click, duplicate, you can put team once again and then have a user. And then from there, you can remove this whole shebang and it's just pinned is checked. So I did make an error on the first filter. We're gonna make sure it's filtered to pinned is Checked. And then what we can do is we can take these over here. So could just be, you know, like this, my week, copy the link, paste it in here. So then what we can do is we can like duplicate this, drop it down over here and then get rid of the pin filter and then do the exact same thing for this. Or we can set this to like pinned is unchecked, which actually would probably be preferential. In my opinion, you just change this to the filter is and pinned is unchecked. And then if you wanna group it in different ways, you can just you can go to the three dots, duplicate like the me view, or probably the duplicate by the team view because that's got like all the notes. We duplicate the team view, you can do by participant. So we do by participant. So it's separated by who the people are in it. So obviously if I assigned this to me, it would separate that. You can also just rename this to by participant. You can then duplicate this and do by type. So, you know, if like a select, I'm gonna do like this arrow over here and then say, you know, we just want it to be by the type of meeting that you've had. 
and it's still gonna be sorting by descending. And then anytime one of these would wanna become a pin note, we just pin it, or then you unpin it. And it's a very simple layout, right? So now what we have is all of your notes that you've ever taken in a calendar, all of your pin notes, all of your group notes, very easily in one page for you to manage. And then if you ever wanna like, you know, change how many pages you wanna deal with, you can go to the three dots here and change the load limit to like 10 so that it doesn't get overwhelming for all these different group notes. And it only shows the 10 most recent ones. And I always like to have this as an option for most things. But what you can do is you can then, since you have all of these, just like search in the bar. So like, obviously if I change this name to like test or something, make it a weekly sync, you just type test and like, that's gonna pop up there. So it's a very easy way to search within the notes too. And then from a template standpoint, I'm gonna make the default one untitled and just write a little uh, symbol that looks just like the database item. And then you can have a slash H2 like notes section with a bullet point. And then you can have a slash H2 action item section. But the kicker here is that you then, after you delete these out, is you can have a toggle for new projects and new tasks. So essentially after you're taking notes, you realize, ah, got some tasks and projects that I can utilize. Uh, let's, let's make some new ones here. So then all you do is it's pretty simple. Go back to like the workflow we were doing before and uh, pretty much like take one of the views you like from the actions page or from any of the task views, paste it in here, create linked view. And then just like we did for the journal database, remove all the filters except the meanings and notes and then make sure it references this template right here. We know it is this template because I put this symbol. And then the same thing for the projects, right? So I'm gonna bold these by the way, because I like bolding things. Now, when we go to the projects page, let's snag like this one, paste in this view, and just change the filter to only be for the meetings and notes are related to this note. So we kind of see the origins of the different projects and tasks and where they came from notes wise. And then now we're gonna go to the template, press the three dots, set it as a default. And now anytime you make a note, create this one right here. All right, so let's say it's for how to improve my video recordings. I think I'm getting better, but I don't know how much. You can do something along the lines of just be better. It's like, well, how do I just be better? Buy a fancy microphone. And then once the action items come out of that, you know, wonderful meeting I just had with myself, I could then go here and do buy a fancy microphone. Or even better, I could have just copied it, pasted it in there. So very simple, easy workflow to have a notes set up in your second brain where you're gonna have notes for yourself, notes for your team, whether it be your meetings or just random things you jot down, all connected with your projects and tasks, just like I'm connecting this segue into the next video on how to improve your productivity even more.